To determine the asteroid's acceleration in both unit vector notation and as a magnitude and direction, we are going to organize the forces into a sort of table here. Now what we've done is we've listed force F1, F2, and F3, as well as a resultant force, which will basically be the total force. And we're going to find the X and Y components of each. Now, we perhaps know that the X component of a force is going to equal the magnitude of the force times the cosine of an angle. It is very important to understand though that when you measure that angle, you are always measuring the angle relative to the positive x axis. Furthermore, if your angle is counterclockwise, then we assign a positive sign to it, and if your angle is measured in a clockwise fashion, then we assign a negative to it. So that's very important to keep in mind. And then we also know that the y component of a force is going to equal the force times the sine of theta, again, as long as we measure theta in accordance with the rules we just outlined. So for example, we have force F1, it's 32 newtons, and if we look at the diagram, we can see that that force is acting at an angle theta1, and theta1 is given as 30 degrees. So what we will do for the x component is do 32 newtons multiplied by the cosine of 30 degrees. For the y component, we'll do 32 newtons multiplied by the sine of 30 degrees. So far, so good. We move on to F2, and F2 has a magnitude of 55 newtons, and if you look at the diagram, F2 is actually pointing directly along the positive x-axis. That will mean that the angle is zero degrees. So for the x component of F2, you would write 55 newtons cosine of zero degrees. The y component will be 55 newtons times the sine of zero degrees. Moving on to F3, the magnitude is 41 newtons. The angle theta3 is given as 60 degrees, but look at theta3. It's measured in a clockwise fashion. It's measured below the x-axis. We noted earlier that if the angle is measured below the x-axis or in a clockwise fashion, it has to be negative. So make sure you use a negative 60 degrees for theta3. So for instance, F3, we know the magnitude again is 41 newtons. We're going to multiply that by the cosine of negative 60 degrees. And then the y component is 41 newtons times the sine of negative 60 degrees. Now set your calculator to degree mode and what you'll do is you will add all three x components to get the resultant x component. And then you'll add all three y components to get the resultant y component. So we'll just put little plus signs here to indicate that we're adding these three together and then same thing with the y components. So let's go ahead and do that. And so in the x component, you should end up with about 103.21 newtons. And then the y component, you should have negative 19.51 newtons. So those are the components of the resultant force. Now we need acceleration. And of course we know that F net is equal to mass times acceleration. If we take that equation and divide both sides of it by mass, then we can see that the net force divided by mass will give us the acceleration. So we're gonna come over here and use that equation to calculate the acceleration. We'll take our net force in each component. So what we're gonna do here is take 103.21 newtons, and that was in the x direction, so we use I hat to indicate that direction. It's basically the x direction. And we're going to divide that by the mass. And the mass of this object or of this yeah, asteroid was 120 kilograms. So we'll, pull, we'll fill in 120 kilograms here. Now the net y component was this minus 19.51, so we'll have minus and then 19.51 newtons divided by the same mass, 120 kilograms. Because this is in the y direction, we will use the j hat notation. So let's pick up our calculators again and basically divide each force by the mass of 120 newtons. So in the x direction, you should get 0.86 meters per second squared, and that's again i hat. And then in the y direction, you should end up with a minus 0.163 meters per second squared, and that again is j hat. And part A of this question wanted the acceleration in unit vector notation, so in fact 
this would be the correct answer to part A of the question. Now for part B and C, we're asked for the magnitude and the direction of this acceleration. And we have to give the direction relative to the positive direction of the x-axis, and that's pretty common. So to understand how to do this, it might help to sketch a little y and x-axis here. We have the overall acceleration in the x direction as being positive 0.86. So because it's positive, you would draw a vector pointing to the right, which is the positive x direction, of course. And you can go ahead and label that 0.86 meters per second squared. The y component was negative. So what you're going to do at the tip of your first vector is draw a vector going downward. It's downward because it was negative, and that would be 0.163 meters per second squared. The resultant acceleration is this vector right here, and we need that magnitude. We'll just call it A for now. And so we can just use Pythagorean theorem because we have ourselves a right triangle. So the acceleration squared will equal the 0.86 meters per second squared squared plus the 0.163 meters per second squared squared and then to solve this for the acceleration you're just going to take the square root on both sides that will create acceleration on the left hand side so just a so let's go ahead and punch this into our calculators and when we do so we will get an acceleration magnitude equal to 0.88 approximately so this would be the correct answer to part b of the question and the unit is still meters per second squared. As for the angle, we want this angle right here. You'll notice perhaps that you can use the tangent function here because we know that the tangent of that angle right there would equal the opposite side of our right triangle divided by the adjacent side of our right triangle. Hopefully you can see that the opposite side would be the 0.163 meters per second squared divided by the adjacent, which is the 0.86 meters per second squared. To actually solve for theta, don't forget you have to do the inverse tangent of this ratio. So pick up your calculators and go ahead and punch this in. And when you do so, you're going to get an angle of about 10.7 degrees. Now, let's not forget that that angle is being measured in a clockwise fashion. It's measured below the x-axis. We've noted earlier that that means the angle is in fact negative. So the final answer to part C and the final direction of this acceleration will be negative 10.7 degrees.